Uh, can you hear me? It's okay? Yes, great, because I couldn't hear myself. So um, I'm going to have this talk. This is the last talk of today. I hope all of you had a wonderful first day at the Juno World Conference. So I had to share something about how I came up with this presentation. Um, when I read that Juno World Conference was going to happen in Rome, I had a dream of me talking on a stage with a dress like Audrey Hepburn and uh, having a talk uh, that was titled Roman Holidays. So now you know how I end up here. And imagine my enthusiasm when Rowan and the people organizing this uh, um, event call me and say, Chiara, would you like to give a talk? And I say, oh my god. This is a dream. A dream is coming true. Oh, yes, of course. So I was really excited. One important thing that I need to say is that although I would love to give a talk about the movie, uh, it doesn't have nothing to do with the movie itself. In fact, uh, the Roman holiday is just an expedient to talk about ancient Romans uh, and how we can learn, um, what we can learn from them in terms of organization and leadership. So saying this, I know that, uh, oops, uh, oh, yeah. Okay, never mind. Let's go this way. So saying this, I will say that I think it's important to introduce myself, uh, although most of you may know me. I've been around the Joomla community for many years, first as a volunteer, then in 2014 I was a brand manager, and, um, and today I'm here as a speaker, and I help the community whenever it's needed. Um, I am Italian, so I, um, I am an art director. I am the art director of my own company called Until Sunday. Most of you know me how, about uh, how crazy I am about typography and colors. And today you discovered that I am also a big fan of Audrey Hepburn. So, and this is a reproduction of, a poor reproduction of me on the Vespa. This is my husband's Vespa. So, we really own the Vespa. So, so this is me. And um, the last time I was uh, in Italy, it was this time. I don't know if, if some of the Italians were around at this moment. Um, I'm going to refresh the memory. It was a Juno day in 2014. I was in, Mil it was in Milan. And uh, at the same time, we had a Juma World Conference going on in Mexico. And uh, I wanted to build the first bridge somehow in that, that moment, because uh, all these people, there were 1,000 attendees on this event. Can you imagine that? In Joomla Day, in just one day. And I asked the community, the Italian community, to stand up with me and take a selfie so that we could show that the Italian community was there. Even if they were not in Mexico, they were there with their spirits and enthusiasm. So this is my last, the last time I talk in Italy. So you may understand why I'm so excited to be here right now in my own country. So, and because I'm Italian, and I know that my talk is uh, uh, translated from, Ita from English to Italian, I think it's important to say that uh, probably um, it, you may have noticed that Italian is, done, is not just about the language, but it's also about the gestures, right? So I think that if you start going around Rome, you need some background about our culture, and probably some um, uh, can I say some advice about the gesture, even if you are engaging some talks with Italians. So one of the important gestures, one of the most common gestures, is the one you see here, and I tried to perform it here on the stage, and uh, which is this one, right? Everybody knows this gesture. So what does it mean? It means what you want. You can use even one hand, or you can use two hands in this way. So to perform this gesture, you have to be, uh, you have to Mm, close your hand like a cone upward and move the hands even motionless, so keep it this way, or you move it. Depending on your impatience, you do it this way. What do you want? Cosa vuoi? 
This is the way how Italians talk, okay? So, if, and you have to be careful of the face. If they are like this, they are really angry. If they are like this, what do you want? They are more relaxed. So, this is one gesture that I think you need to keep in mind if you go on uh, around, if you have a walk around room. A second gesture that you may find <clears throat> really useful to know, it's about um, uh, the verb stealing. So if you start engaging with, about politics with Italians, they may come out with some strange gestures and expression. One of these could be the stealing um, uh, gesture. It's not really a, 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 all the politician in Italy still, but it's a nice gesture that I want to show you because it's not really common. And it's really difficult to perform. So you, hit, you need to hold your hand out, and then you start closing slowly, like playing the harp, the, the, the hand, so you do this. This is the way, the thumb needs to stay outside. It's like playing the gesture, yeah, this is the way. Okay, so this means still. The last gesture that I want you to learn is about how Italians express approval. You may say, okay, but this is not the way. We actually have this sign and then we turn it 45 degrees this way. So if you like, you go in a restaurant and you, have, you, you want to express that you like something, you do this, perfetto. Or you can do this, perfetto. Okay, so this is our basic gesture that will, I, I'm sure you're gonna use it or see people using it around. So now you know the basics. So now you're ready to go around Rome and I'm gonna ask you to have a trip with me in the eternal city. Um, so you may wonder why Rome, after all the empire fall, so what am I going to learn from it? Well, I would like to invite you to see Rome from a completely different, per, different perspective, which is how such a big empire managed to last for so many centuries and leave to us, all of us, even today, such a big legacy. So, and uh, this is about uh, the community. This is about uh, how such a big community like the empire could survive. And I'm gonna try during this talk to make you think how and what we can learn as a Joomla community, as an open source community, or as a big business, if you own one, how, what you can learn from the, Rome, the ancient Roman. So we're gonna have a tour, and the tour will start by entering Rome from the Appia Way, then we stop at the Imperial Forum for a long walk until the Colosseum, then we go back we, and we go in Piazza della Rotonda to admire the Pantheon architecture, and we finish our talk and our tour at the Arapaches. So are you ready for this tour around Rome? Okay, so hop in my Vespa and let's start. So the Appia Way was the ancient route. It was called the Regina Viarium the queen of all the roads. And this was the way to enter. The first road was built by the Romans to enter into the city. It was strategically building, built to create a, a kind of connection between Rome, the city, and, one, and the small provinces around it. So Rome at that time, when the first the road was built, it was such a small province, but it was, they understood that if they wanted to expand, they need to build a strong network, a strong communication. And they understood that many centuries ago, when we, where there were no internet, no emails, no phones, so imagine how they were going to conquer, and the first thing they were doing was building infrastructure, so giving to these people the way to communicate back with Rome, the city, the capital. And over 700, in the course of 700 years, uh, centuries, they built something like 50,000 miles of paved highway, so to give an idea, with those roads, you can encircle the, full, the, the globe. So that was, and it was many centuries ago. So Roman understood that if they wanted to keep everybody's expectation in sight, and they wanted to keep everybody focused, they need to have a fast communication, an efficient way to communicate with these people. 
In fact, the provinces knew that if they were attacked or invaded by barbarians, uh, the Roman troops were, were able to answer to that really fast. Of course, we need to think about the time and the context in there. So fast means probably even two, three days. But that was the way. And this is how the Roman Empire started to build and spread everywhere. So a community like Joomla needs a network, an efficient way to communicate, an efficient way to keep everybody on focus. One important thing that the Roman thought about it was to create a map of their growth. That means they had a, a, like a, the, the list of all the destinations that was continuously updated any time a new territory was conquered and a new road was built. More or less how we do with documentation, with press releases, we inform people what's going on uh, in our community. This is a, was a way not only to help, help the troops and the merchants to know about new routes, but it was a way to keep everybody uh, updated on what was going on in the, in the, empire, on the empire. So when we talk, when we press so much about to have people and, and documenting our, our uh, releases or our work or way of working, we need to understand that this is part of the way we want to communicate in a community that is so wide and large. So once we are inside the Rome as the old city, we are going to work in, in, into Via de, uh, de Fori Imperiali. This is a beautiful road, and it was even more magnificent in the time when Rome was an empire. The Forum was a place where the Romans could meet. It was a social and cultural uh, place where all the main discussion were taking, um, were, were happening, and uh, where the Senate was, where all the high-ranking aristocrats could come and have a say about the things going on in, in, the, in the city and all in the empire. So it was a communal focus point for all the people who were, were at the leadership. And not only, merchants could go there, citizens could reach the place to make announcements and proclamations. There was also the Via Sacra, the sacred route, which was a place for celebration whenever Rome was winning wars. So the one important thing that we need to say about the Imperial Forum, the, it's about how huge and beautiful it was. Unfortunately, what you will see today are just ruins. But in the past, it was something amazing. Every emperor were to show the power and, the, the, and how big the, the empire was, was building muni, mon, monuments dedicated to himself or to a specific god for protection of the city and of the empire itself. And uh, I want you to imagine the Romans walking coming from far away and walking inside this imperial forum. I think they had some kind of, they were really like proud to be inside this place. But most of all, they were proud to be part of that community of such a strong and um, uh, empire like the Roman ones. They didn't have uh, other competitors. So they had a reason to be uh, proud of, of being citizen of Rome. So. I, the Roman Empire is an, uh, sorry, the Imperial Forum is an example of how heavy emblems like our logo, the T-shirts, all these little things are important for building a sense of belonging, a sense of community, because it's 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 what makes us proud. Our logo is what makes us proud. Also, the the heart is part of is part of it. So, this is. Uh, um, um, this is why when I was a brand manager, I was pressing so much to have symbols, to have everything in place, so that we, everybody could communicate well the spirit of the community in a way that everybody in the community could be proud of. So a place for discussion and a place where citizens uh, and the community could feel um, proud to belong. So at the end of the forum, we are going to meet this huge monument that you may know, which today and still in many, for in many of you have, is the main destination of uh, Rome and the symbol of Rome itself, so the Colosseum. 
So you may wonder about the story of this place. And uh, you may say, Chiara, well, you know there were atrocities happening in this place. So why are you bringing this monument in here? But I want you to think not about what was happening inside, but I want you to think about the reason and why it was built. So we need to go back a few cent many centuries, not just few, few, many centuries back in time. So when Nero was the emperor, and he was actually uh, the last, uh, was the last emperor of his dynasty, and he suicided, and he left the empire in complete decadence. And, there were, and the, the empire was completely invaded by, they had pro many problems, mostly there were, there were a lot of civil wars going on. The next generation of emperors was the Flavian emperors, uh, the Flavian dynasty, and there were just four emperors coming after Nero. So they, in, they, they took this empire completely in decadence and they're trying to reestablish public welfare and the power to the Senate that was there and during Nero was completely um, neglected. And as a gift for, to the citizen for the hard work, for the passion, let's say, for suffering during that time, they built these monuments. It was a gift to the emperors, to the citizen, a place where they could have fun and they could, where citizens could have some kind of way to forget about the real problems or to think about the real problems in a different perspective. So the, with time, uh, the Colosseum became a place where sponsors, influencers could join and actually give money, not only to the city, but also to uh, promote these events. And uh, one important thing that was happening that because everybody was happy attending, everybody was like excited, more or less like you were excited to come here at the Juno World Conference, like uh, waiting these days, the time you were in Condor all together again. So the Romans were, they were experiencing this kind of spirit, the excitement to have 100 days of game going on in the city. And citizens from all over the world were meeting in there. So it was uh, giving this positive energy. They were going bring and being, bringing back into their city. So I think you, you understand the analogy I'm trying to find here. So imagine this event, the Juno World Conference, where we are now. So it was a, it's a similar thing that hap was happening for the Romans, right? When we come in these places, in places like events, like the Jane Beyond, the Joomla World Conference, the Joomla Days that we have every, every month, I mean, Joomla Days, sometimes they happen every month in different places of the world. It's a way not only for discussing or learning, but it's a place to actually meet and experience the community as it is, like people. We have family, we have hobbies. So for a while, we forgot that we are the developers, we are the marketing in the marketing team. We experience people for what they are. So for the happy people, they had something, they, we listen to their problems, or we listen to their achievements, and how actually it's a way to sharpen our skills because we learn about them, how they, and it's a, a way to compare our business with others' business in the field. And of course we have sponsors. Sponsors make this happen. And uh, of course in exchange of visibility. But it's a, for the sponsor, it's a way to actually get in contact with the community, listen to them, understand what, uh, what the community needs or what are their complaints or even how they can even um, improve their application extension products for the community. And the last thing is that that whenever, when we go back home after all these three days, we, our spirits has completely changed. We may come here with complaints, why didn't, this didn't happen, uh, uh, I would like to have this and that, but the spirit when we are back into our places, is, uh, there is a kind of inspiration, motivation that comes out any time we have events like this one today. So, we need to leave our, the Pantheon, the Colosseum at our back and then go toward Piazza della Rotonda. Unfortunately, the Pantheon, uh, the Colosseum, um, you will see it was uh, like, it's just a ruin of what it was. But you will really surprise about the beauty of this architecture. And you will be so surprised that you will ask yourself how it managed so many centuries 
and uh, to survive for so many centuries, and that you will think that it's ageless, like somebody built it yesterday, or I don't know, many few few centuries ago. And actually, this is not the case. This is an ancient um, temple today transformed into a church, and is an example of uh, the beautiful architecture, uh, the, ro the beautiful of Roman, um, the beauty of Roman architecture. What the Roman knew from the first time it was that the empire they built because they knew that the empire would never die that was the way they were building they built to stay and last um, another important thing about the dome the the pantheon is that when you enter inside uh, if you haven't visited there is a beautiful dome on top with an oculus a little hole this is even today is the most uh, is the only unsupported dome that exists. Architects from everywhere in the world come and study how the, the Romans managed to create such a dome. They study that even today they're trying to understand what happened, what, what are the things behind, what are the secrets behind this um, architecture. It's a, like a miracle for most of, of them. And, uh, and this is why I, I'm bringing this uh, architecture here, the Pantheon, the monument, because the, it, it's not just uh, that they built to last, but they also try to create, to inspire and motivate generation ahead. And even today, if you go in London, New York, wherever you come from, you may see columns, arch, and things that are just a reproduction of uh, this excellent uh, of, uh, architecture. And one last thing that is important, the, the Romans didn't start big, they start small. And in one small step, slowly, they were able to build something like an empire. What I want to say that uh, a small change uh, in their way of building bring, brought this to us. And uh, what I'm, uh, this small change was the concrete. The, today we give it for granted, but actually it's not at least for the Romans it wasn't, but this changed completely the way they were building. So this little change, it was a huge change in scale for the Romans. And it brought many monuments, and not only roads and everything, they're still lasting today. If you go up your way, it's still uh, intact, so you can see that. Um, so again, when you, you go to, when you go home, when you start writing your code maybe for the Juma 4 or anything you create, with whatever is a design, whatever is uh, just a string of code that's gonna help somebody, some, someone else to develop or create new ideas, this is the way you need to think your contribution in a community like or an open source community. Whatever you do, start, start small. If you cannot contribute for, for, for uh, long, just give something like a trampoline for giving some to other people the, the tools to develop other ideas based on your little suggestion, little insight. This is the, after all, the open source way of thinking, right? This is the spirit of the open source. So build to last, build to motivate, and start small, but think always big in a way that someone else can take your ideas and make them for, for others, available, accessible for others. Our last stop is going to be at the Arapaches. The the, this, this altar, this is a beautiful monument that was uh, uh, on the northeastern part of Campus Martius, but that today is well preserved in a museum. So the Arapaches was built during a really specific moment of the Roman Empire. It was the, Pax, the moment of, called the Pax Romana. Pax means peace, so the Roman peace. And the main author of this moment was Augustus, to whom this monument is dedicated. This, he was coming back from two years of wars in Spain, and after his uh, work in the sacred route, the Senate decided to give him, dedicate to him this monument that uh, it was uh, built for, to uh, talk about how important is stability, peace in a in, in large empire. So Augustus was uh, the emperor, uh, the first emperor of Rome. 
and uh, he did a really skillful campaign trying to convince all the Romans that war was bad, the war is not helping, the having fighting is fighting each other, fighting for conquering, it was not good. The Romans need stability, they need peace. And imagine that Romans were, were all about wars. This is how they conquered and they expanded. So this was completely new to them. So he did a really skillful campaign and propaganda based on something really important called values. And in Latin, these values were called mos maiorum. There were five. And he believed, and I'm going to list them to, do, to, that, to you, but what I want to say and the reason why he brought them back, it was because he believed that a celebration of these values were not just a celebration, it was not making you a good person, a good man, but it was going to make good to the community, to the emperor himself. So, so he, he, he wanted that, uh, Romans bring back, brought back, uh, could bring back these values and impersonate them and um, try to, to bring um, peace, stability, and success inside empire. So I'm going now, at this point of this presentation, to ask you to see as a volunteer, as a leader, as a probably leader of a business, you don't have to be open source uh, leader or uh, if you have any business and you're working with other people, if you actually own this value, if you actually are able to, or you have this value, or you celebrate this value whenever, wherever you are. So let's start with the first one, which is Fides. So Fides is about loyalty, it's about trust, uh, tr uh, trustworthy, it's about confidence, but in a community like us, it's about reliability and credibility. Can people trust in you? Can people believe in you, in your skill, or what you say? Are you going to do it? Or are you going to leave them in the middle of nowhere? So in a community like us, this is a one important value that we need to cultivate. The second value that Augustus was celebrating, it was pietas. Pietas is not pity, it's not mercy. It's about the relationship you are able to build with the other individuals in your community. It's about your manners in public. It's about the way you, re you create relationship in a dutiful and good way with other people inside your community. The third one, which is also really important, is majestas. That if you are a leader, if you are at the head of a, uh, a co uh, company, if you are heading a, a team or you're leader of a team, you, it means that you need to lead and govern in a way that you make everybody happy to belong to that community. But if you are a volunteer, if you're a simple employee, it means that you're doing all your best you, to, to help the company, the community, to actually raise and grow. And this is related to virtus, which means, which, which comes from the word, uh, word vir, which means man, but uh, it means mostly to have the skills of a man, of a man. That means uh, mostly altruism and generosity, kindness, and it means that if you know and if you have skills, you put them at the service of the community. Even if they are just small skills that you think they're not useful, but you think you, you know how to do that, this is the way you can share it with the others. So this is virtus. And then the fifth one, which is gravitas, which I think, I personally think, and I struggle myself with that a lot, is the most difficult one. And it's about self-control. It's about presence. It's about charisma. It's your aura. It's about the way you take decisions. It's about how you are able to lead others, leaving your passion behind you. It's a way to say, it's, a, it's answer a specific question. It is about, can you lead yourself before leading others? So, 
that were the five important values that today we could call them as a culture code of a company or a community or a small organization. And they were important, and this was what made Rome great at that time for 200 years. Can you imagine that? I mean, Joomla is just not even 20, so it's a lot of years I had, okay? So my question to you and the way I want you to see this talk is that whenever you go and you, whenever you start, you, in these days we're gonna have the Joomla in action and you probably, we are gonna have many contributors that wants to participate to this moment. And I want you to think about the values I taught today. I want you to think how your skills, your help could really help us build something bigger. And I want you to think how your small contribution, if it's just today, is gonna make a big change in the community. It's like a little drop in this ocean of people. And um, Augustus, the emperor, said that, I found Rome a city of bricks and left it a city of marble. He said that when he was actually leaving the empire to other to go be governed. So, and uh, today here, we are called to build a bridge. And I'm asking you, let's build it in marble. Thank you.